Thank you. Uh, how many people here are running a Vizia setup right now? Great. Good. So really, the great thing about a Vizia setup is insight. And when you have an insight into a market, you really can understand things more, obviously, as you all know. When you've got a setup where you're looking into a marketplace like this, you're able to quickly find influencers, quickly find those conversations that matter. And for a really big brand, that, that's a very important thing to do. You know, at IKEA, it was challenging because obviously there's a lot of decision makers, there's a lot of politics, and there's a lot of red tape, to be honest. And so I was fortunate to work with some stakeholders where we were able to move this in very quickly and get the project going fast. And that can be a challenge, you know, for any kind of a project, obviously, in a large organization. And it was a real honor to work with those people and do that. And I'm very grateful for that opportunity. What I like about Vizia is that I am able to visualize for a stakeholder who doesn't understand the analytics background and the analytics dashboard something, some kind of insight, something that matters for him or her quickly. And I think that's the important part of Vizia is that you're able to see something quickly and make sense of it right now. Obviously, there's a lot of different parts to an organization. And in IKEA, there are a ton of silos. And there are a ton of different organizations within IKEA. And so one of the opportunities with, this, with a setup like this is to distribute insight throughout all those silos and regions, right? IKEA is in many countries. There's many languages. And there's even different groups within those different countries that are operating. And so when we're able to set up a Vizia command center and an analytics team that is delivering to all those different parts of the organization, that is obviously more helpful than if you're only delivering to one part, right? That's the opportunity with Vizia. You're able to send a visualization to a team and get that into their view right now. And I stress right now, we're in an environment at this time where things are happening on the fly. And if we know what's happening on the fly, then we will be better at what we're doing. Now, one of the first things that we do is we have to set up those screens, right? And that creates a ruckus. When you set up the screens, um, and I don't know if my mic is working now. Is it working now? Uh, when you set up these screens, there's going to be a lot of things going on that can be a little bit challenging, right? I mean, everybody wants to know what's going on. Everybody's confused about what's going on. But that is actually part of the victory of Vizia. You are bringing insights into an organization in a way that they have not been brought before. You're helping stakeholders, you're helping the hippos at the top understand what this stuff is that we do at Brandwatch. And that's the value of Vizia, okay? And this part of the process, when you're putting up the screens, is integral to that. It's the initiation point. It's that point when people say, gosh, I can't stand the sound of the drills, or how come we had to take a screen down and put another screen back up? Or why don't we put six screens up instead of four screens? When you get into those conversations, you get into the meat, you know? You get into the real meat of the politics. And all of those people that didn't want to have something put up in front of everybody else, suddenly get weeded out. And we get to get into the people that are excited about the brand, right? We get to get into the people that really want to find out the truth about the brand. The opportunity with Vizia is to see something that we want to know right now. Let's bring everybody in a nice U shape of couches around our screens. This is in Indonesia. Indonesians are putting U shapes of couches around screens. We should all do that. We should do what they're doing. You know, Bagus, Bali. These guys are great to do that. Because here's where the hippos can sit, the stakeholders, and then the analysts can come and talk to them about what's up on those screens, right? Why not? And by the way, up in the top, we can have a funnel that brings down some nice sweet music or some smells. <laughs> Something to give you an environment, right? I mean, why should Vizia only be a visualization tool? Why don't we get into every sense, right? I mean, that's really what's going on up there. We're getting into the physical, tangible part of a community and of influencers. 
I found that it was very important to title the screens correctly. With the teams that I've worked with, when you put the right title on a screen, on a, on a tile, then when people come by, they know what that is, right? If, if you just say chart, or if you say globe, that's not gonna work. You need to put, this is the globe about English mentions in Twitter. You need to say, these are the most popular tweets in English in the last day, right? They need to know that. When, when you have influencers come up in the, in the company and they look at these screens, they wanna know what they're looking at. When you set up Vizia, title your screens correctly. Yeah, so a Vizia setup is a brain. You are building a brain and the whole organization can benefit from that brain. You're feeding intelligence into all the silos. You're having the hippo understand what it is that you are working on all those weeks and all those months. You're getting to take that report that you put together and turn it into a well-titled screen that the hippo can read and get insight from. And then, after a while, you get to take every part of the world that's in your organization and move the world and influence it. You can start shaping what's happening at your com company, shaping the brand. Of course, first you want to listen to what's happening in the unknown unknowns, and you want to understand what people are saying out there about your brand without having too much of a mind about it. Just let it come to you, you know? Listen to what they're saying. Don't come to it with preconceptions. And then start deciding how you want to shift things ever so slightly. Because that's our job as a brand, right? Our job is to be customer-centric and is to give back to those customers that bought from us. But first, we need to know what they're saying about us. And that's the benefit of Vizia, is we get to really see what people are saying. We get to hear what they're saying. <laughs> what if the CEO of our company was sitting in her bathtub and she got on her little wrist app insights about the brand? That would be pretty nice for her, wouldn't it? What if she was in her bathtub and she was able to touch her wrist in this new fangled device here and find out if the brand was happy, if the customers were happy, if the competitors were uh, doing something that she should be doing, what if that was happening? That's possible. Why should we constrict Vizia to screens inside of the marketing department? Look, Vizia's responsive. We can see it anywhere. We can see it in our bathtubs, and I think we should do that. And I think it's possible. It is possible to look at Vizia in your bathtub, and it's gonna happen more and more. And, and I think inventing apps for leadership is important. We can take our insights and we can invent apps with a company like Brandwatch that are helpful for our leadership. We can do that because Brandwatch has a culture where they shift with us and they change with us with what we need. And that's the nice thing about these people at Brandwatch. You know, I think really in the end, you, we're all a big happy family, right? So obviously, if you can mix with everybody in the company and start to bring your insights to everybody, that's gonna be very nice, you know? Imagine for a moment if we were able to get a room full of people talking about the customers, the competitors, the trends, our internal staff. One of the nice things at Ikea that I was able to do was to identify 68,000 employees in social media and see what they were saying. That's a very nice project. And it's a very nice project for one specific reason that I'll talk about today, 2,500 top ambassadors in social media for the brand. Fantastic. And then the one that was gonna lead social media for the company. Boom. HR. There's a silo-specific benefit from Vizia and from Brandwatch, okay? And when you can bring all the silos together, just like this spiral dance in some lovely hippie community, then the whole organization gets happy. 
You know, it's difficult to do. I know. I know it is. But in a company that has Scandinavian roots, where all of this stuff was very well experimented with in the 60s, it's <laughs> wonderful to see it beginning. And Vizia helps us do it. Because let's face it, an image is a way into a community. If I can see the people around an image and I can talk to them, then I can get very close to what my dream is, right? And if this isn't the dream of your corporation, then maybe you should make it the dream of it. And if you still can't make it the dream of that corporation, then maybe you should leave that corporation and work somewhere else. Because to be honest, when we have a corporation that does this, we will be doing service to our customer, right? And Vizia can help us do that. Vizia can give us the images of our insights and the people around the insights and help us to have a culture like this. Because that's what the world needs right now. It does. One of the really cool opportunities is to look at customer journeys. And we can also visualize those, right? I mean, come on. Let's take a look at our consumer segments. Let's take a look at what these people are talking about. And let's visualize it for our hippos up on those Vizia screens. And let's get deep with those customer segments. And we can do that with Vizia. Yes, it's a strange world out there, but let's keep it that way. You know, I think that these segments are something that we want to enhance. We want to grow those segments. We want to deepen our understanding of those segments. And we want to be with those people. And Vizia helps us to do that. When I was at IKEA headquarters in Delft, Holland, and I was looking at those screens I showed you earlier on, I was able to see the specific consumer segments talking about the brand. I was able to see when the wives said to the husbands, let's go to Ikea, and the husband said, I don't want to fucking go to Ikea. <laughs> and then the wife said, you better go to Ikea or else we're going to get divorced. And then they went into the maze in Ikea, and they actually got a conversation going where they got a vision for that extension. And the guy said, I'm going to give you an extension. And lo and behold, I was able to see in Vizia when that marriage was saved in the maze of Ikea. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ikea, for your maze. But by the way, if you enter the maze in Ikea with your woman or your man or your partner, be careful, because it may go the opposite direction, too. So be sure that you're ready to do that extension or whatever it is you're going to do. I think it's really important that we open up this command center. This is not a black box. We are together in this room. We are deciding together what to do. We're brainstorming, OK? This is not about some insights team or some secret cobble or some CIA installed <laughs> research group inside of a large brand helping that brand to take over some segment of the population so it can suck more blood out of their veins <laughs> and kill them. That's not what this is about. We are actually getting every silo around, every hippo, every wannabe hippo, and every person that loves the brand, ideally. And we are bringing our, all of our ideas together and coming up with something great for the customer. And that's what these Vizia things are about. You know, Charlene Lee and her team at Altimeter are wonderful people, and I love those people. And Susan Etlinger once said, is this thing a shiny, bright object? Maybe so. But right now, it's a living object that gets us into the meat of our customer, gets us into the actual physically felt dream of our customer. That's what Vizia does. Look, I mean, I'm spending more time on Instagram like going, huh, huh, looking tch, 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 than I am in Facebook these days, right? Vizia is like Instagram. It's these images of our research. Pretty dang cool. I've had a real honor and privilege to be living in Glastonbury the last couple of months and working with the Clark Shoes team. And this is our screens over at Clark Shoes. And some of the team are here today. Um, I gotta tell you, Glastonbury is a cool town. If you haven't been there, go. Really go. And Street is a great town, too. And there's a lot of great shopping to do in Street. And, and, and if you weave the shopping with the magic in Glastonbury, there's nothing like it. I mean, for, for a guy from LA, it's like the best thing on earth, you know? But I think. If we can, oh. I think if we, if we can, now it's time for me to get off. So, um, we're back. Sorry. I think if we can, all of us, bring these into our corporations 
And I think if we can all of us begin to very tactically title our screens, and I think if all of us can start to bring those hippos into the room and those U-shaped couches that are flooded with scents of jasmine and of lovely other things, and I think that if we are also able to deliver to those stakeholders something in their bathtub where they can read what's going on and not really have to go to work by 10 o'clock, maybe go by 10.30 or 11 o'clock this morning. I mean, when we can start to get into the human element of our corporation and our brand and our agency and get to the mark with an image, that is where we realize what Vizzy is about. And that is what this thing in front of you is about. So go buy one. There's people here outside in all of this room with the or shirt on that will sell it to you. It's really expensive, but it's really, really powerful. So it's kind of like buying a Bugatti or a Lamborghini, but it's really worth it. And as a social media guy that's been in this world for a while and has stumbled through the river in Radiant 6 and gotten lost and has waded through the Sysimo stream and not found my way out again and has sat with the people browser data and said, what is this thing? It is a relief to finally arrive inside a brand watch where it all makes sense and people are friendly and the world is uniting around images to get something done today so that our customer is happy and our hippo in the bathtub is happy. Thank you. I think that's the most beautifully surreal and touching and mesmerizing talk we've ever had at a masterclass. So that was absolutely phenomenal. Great job, Nathaniel. And I imagine there's going to be lots of questions around bathtubs, but in general, anything in general, let, let's, let's see what Nathaniel has to say. Question at the front. Okay, so what I heard you say is when you get into different regions, get difficulties in doing anal analytics, right? And in visualizing the analytics, correct? Right now I'm working with a Mandarin uh, analyst at Clark Shoes because we're gonna visualize the conversation that's coming out of Sina Weibo and out of Renren and out of other Chinese social media properties. And thank you, Brandwatch, for buying the data from those places so that I can see that. And thank you, Brandwatch, for having 70 access to 70 language analysts that can analyze Spanish and French and Zimbabwe and Swahili and all these other kind of languages for me, right? That's helpful. That's what's happening at Brandwatch. We have access to those kind of people, those analysts for different languages. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So that's when you get when you for Facebook because it's based in the U.S. The servers you got to have real people tagging every one of those mentions. United Kingdom, France. The human is the last mile in intelligence. The machine in five years may be able to do what a human does, but right now it can't. When I first log into the analytics system and my first dashboard on a query in Brandwatch, I have to have an analyst go through blocks of mentions by hand so that the sentiment is correct and so that I can make those charts and get my insights. The human is definitely important in this process. The human that speaks Spanish, Swahili, German, what have you. And thankfully, this technology can access those mentions for me. If you're looking for the magic number when you want to mark up a data set, so if you're, I, basically, I'm so jarring. When you hear Nathaniel and then you come back to me, it's like, oh, it's crap, <laughs> isn't it? He's, so, he's better at selling brand watch than I am. And I never told him to say any of this stuff. So it's, it's amazing, Nathaniel. But uh, if you're looking for the magic number, if you say, like, I want to know, I've got 10,000 mentions, I want to know how many are UK or how many, something that Brandwatch doesn't do out of the box, you need about 380 or 390 to get to a 95% um, certainty ratio. So if you take a couple of hours, sit down with 400 mentions and tag them up yourselves, you can, you can then extrapolate that for your wider data set. So that's one way of doing it. You can also, to shorten the process, if you find, like, there's a contest and 2,000 people retweeted that, that's a pretty positive thing, right? So you can select all, those ta all of those mentions and tag those all as positive. I mean, they're all a positive event, right? People retweeted the contest. So that can speed up the process as well. Yeah. Any more questions from the floor? One in the middle there.
Yes. So um, let us say that impressions are something that causes a hippo to get excited about tweets, right? But we know that impressions are not accurate, right? Let us say that we can see that around a very specific shoe or a very specific couch or a very specific carpet that there are some customer service complaints. Let us see what happens with that particular product when we change it for our customer in the product development stage and the customer celebrates it six to eight months later. If we can take a risk at that, at that stage inside of, a, inside of a corporation, inside of a brand, and have something come out in the market that answers what a customer wants and solves that problem for them, for him or her, then what happens is that that business will get more money, right? Because that product was better made. Do you have any real examples of happening to what I'm talking about? No, I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about what brands are doing inside because I have an NDA with those brands, so I'm not gonna do that. But I'm, I think I was pretty specific enough to say something that referenced it, right? If I have, if I have a chair that is wobbly and because and one leg is short out of 10,000 and I fix it and the product development changes that, then that's a business decision, right? And I did that because 2,000 people complained about it, right? And customer service is marketing. Yeah. Right. One of right, but we can we can find an insight and create a screen around the insight and watch the change. Right, we can see it changing over time. We can deliver that. That's a nice thing to have, isn't it? We can see in the morning if something came up around customer service and there was a big red spike in the middle there. We see see those see those circles. If we got a big red spike, we know that we have to make a decision pretty quickly about a PR-related issue, right? It could be a product-related issue, too. It might be about this chair, because someone fell over and got hurt. So we, were, so we solved a PR issue, a customer service issue, and a product issue. And those are business decisions. Customer service is one of the primary low-hanging fruit from this. This can help us get on top of those things in the instant. There's something called newsjacking, you might have heard of it where I can see a trend going up around a story, and as a brand, I can quickly change that so it doesn't get too high to push people away from my brand, right? That's a good decision to make as a business. And this tool will help you do that, whether it's in the bathtub <laughs> or in the command center. Yeah. So Nathaniel's not allowed to say the specific examples, but there were a couple of instances, we'll keep it anonymous, but there's a PR story that suddenly came up and although they didn't necessarily look at a red spike and go, let's go away and do this, Nathaniel acted as a kind of central hub for insight. So they'd see something come up on the screen, and someone would go, what's going on there? And then you'd put together some pretty sophisticated reports and send it out to all the people that needed to see that insight or piece of information. So it's kind of like a, a prompt for insights rather than doing the detailed data analysis on screen. It's like, what's this? Let's go away and do some analysis. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, yeah cool. Um, are there any more questions for Nathaniel? No? How many people want a Vizia setup after I just spoke? <laughs> did I do I did only one, two? There's plenty. Okay. There's plenty. I mean, for you that don't want a Vizia setup, why is that? <laughs> Come on, tell like why don't you want a Vizia setup? Okay. Can we make an affordable Vizia app for the for the average human being, like the one in the bathtub, so that everybody can research what's going on? I think there are a number of ways. That like nine ninety nine a month. What's, <laughs> go, what's going on with this and that? I mean, that would be. Would you buy that? Okay. Well, so, what about who else said they did, didn't raise their hand around that? Why don't you want a Vizia setup? Do you want one? I didn't sell you on it. So, so if I could help you get a Vizia setup today, <laughs> how, what would help you make that decision? Steak knives? Okay. Um, I definitely see value for it, and I think it's probably the main reason is uh, your previously mentioned hippos getting people on board with the social media journey. I definitely see a lot of value in, it, in that. But I have to say, sort of for sort of long-term marketing stuff beyond tracking campaigns and competitions, I don't see 
massive, massive applications for the brands that I work with, which are you know, big, big name brands, etc. Where we see success is when you have huge, you know, like airlines or, or, you know, food and drink companies where they have it in their headquarters so that pretty much every member of staff or a bank goes through and changes the way they do their job based on what they see when they come in. So they're not necessarily getting deep in the dashboards, but... Yeah, so some brands kind of rent them as well. So just with the Super Bowl, for example, we had two or three brands that advertised during the Super Bowl and knew that they needed like 20 people in the organization in the room, but needed one of these kind of U-shaped command centers and they don't need it every day of the year. It's kind of overkill. So but yeah, sometimes again, it this is about customer service. It's about serving the customer. It's about delivering something that the customer wants, right? And this tool gets you in line with that conversation really fast and it keeps you on top of it. And that's why this is so nice. It's not just a shiny, bright object. It's actually a way to be with the customer right now. Yeah, you could have an assumption inside of your brand that this is the way it always has been, and it will always be that way. And that's very helpful to, to hear that someone say that. Because as a creative, when a critic fires their flame at me, it burns off a little more of my fat, which I do need to burn off. But the thing is, is that this tool can help creatives in an agency come up with artwork that's more effective, come up with copy that's more effective, and do it on the fly real time. We live in a real time environment. It used to be that we could base things off assumption based on experts. But now we're listening for the unknown unknowns. Now we're actually listening to our customer first and coming up with something based upon what they're doing. And when you can see what your customer is doing every morning when you wake up, for 15 or 20 minutes, which is the nice thing about this, when your hippo can see it too, then you can make decisions faster and more accurately. And when you title these correctly and they're based upon insights reports, it's even more sexy. Let's say you had the best insights report in the world. You could make a whole bunch of screens based on that and then watch real time what was going on. That's what that's about. That's what that thing's about. So just to conclude, um, we have some some brands who actually take it right and put screens outside their executive's office just so that when the CEO goes, CEO goes past and he goes, why haven't we responded to that? Why are customers angry about that? And try and almost do that digital transformation thing via putting it in front of the people that can make a difference. Anyway, this is in danger of getting in a sales pitch, and that was never the intention, but I really hope you've enjoyed the talk, and please give Nathaniel a huge round of applause. Right now, we're here talking about Vizio, we're talking about Brandwatch, we're talking about brands can be helped by Brandwatch, and we're basically helping people use social business intelligence to help their customer. That's essentially what this is about. It's about helping customers with intelligence. And how do you think the talk went? What are you going to touch on on the talk? You know, for me, the biggest thing about the talk today was seeing people who were excited about Vizio and seeing people who were excited about Insights and watching those people get deep into the conversation about people. You know, this is all about people. This whole thing is about helping people.